What is your take on market structure and the way executions happen uh, in, the, in the way the market is acting right now? Great topic. So first, I want to make clear that the day of somebody physically entering an order into the market, whether it be an investor or a trader, that day is gone. These orders are generally generated by computers with preset logic. But it's important to note we've not created a Frankenstein. At Virtu, and I know many other firms, more time and effort is put on the control layer on top of the order generation layer. So you never lose control of the marketplace. In the real sense, you have greater control of market interactions today than you did in the past because your ability to change your strategy, to change your logic, is as quick as it is to access the market initially. One criticism, as you know, Bob, is that, look, you ran the, you ran the NASDAQ, right? You, if you were a right. market maker, you had an obligation to stand behind your, your bids and offers. If you're a, a high-tech, if you're Virtu right now, you're kind of a quasi-market maker, you can back away uh, and, and perhaps leave, uh, leave gaps in liquidity. So uh, is that a relevant change? No, no, that, that's not an important factor. So if you look at a firm like Virtu or the electronic markets, you have obligated market makers in the marketplace and they're maintaining tighter bid offer spreads than ever existed before. But you have to understand the market making function is not there to distort where the market wants to go. If the market wants to go up, the market uh, wants to go down, it will do that. The market making function will assist the liquidity at the different stages, but it won't change the general direction of the market. That's the way it is today, that's the way it was in the past. Does it not feel different to you, Bob? Because I know that's what a lot of people who've been in the business a long time say. Yesterday at one point in the morning, I looked up, the NASDAQ, the Dow, and the S&P were all moving precisely 1.6%. It just seems like the orders, wait, they kind of wash across the indexes all at once, and it's not as much a give and take uh, in terms of stock by stock. Well, I, I would say in any one point in time, you could pick out something that looks like an aberration, right? From my point of view, the last couple of years, the lack of volatility in the marketplace has been an aberration. I think now that we're seeing volatility come back in, that's what we, we, we've expected for years. And with the central banks taking out that support, I think you'll see increased volatility. With respect to your individual point, you know, I clearly would have to study that to respond intelligently to it. Uh, but the fact is we're going to be in a time of uh, you know, increased volatility. I think that's not necessarily bad for the marketplace. And as I said, Computers generate these orders, but man controls the computers every step of the way. So, Bob, what would be your advice to individual investors today trying to figure out what's behind these extreme market moves, some of the likes of which we've never seen or we haven't seen since the deep, dark days of the financial crisis, and what would you tell them to do? Well, first, I would put it in perspective. So you have to deal in percentages as opposed to uh, numbers, right? So the market moves 3%. That's happened many, many times in the past. It's never moved 1,000 points, but we never had a uh, 25,000 uh, Dow. So a 3% move will happen, right? Will it happen uh, five times a year, 10 times a year, 20 times a year? I don't know, but it's going to be in that order of magnitude. So investors really always have to look behind the noise of the moment and look at what is the fundamentals of the company. So when I look at the market today where I see a disconnect, I see that next year corporate profits are estimated to grow five, seven, eight uh, percent. We think general GDP will grow two to three percent. So that's not a recessionary environment. And I think the market has been somewhat disconnected from those fundamentals. And if I was an investor, I would always focus on what the fundamentals are telling me and not pay so much attention to volatility in a market in a given day. Yeah, Bob, speaking of all that, I mean, we haven't had a lot to chew on this week, but you do get a Richmond Fed, an Empire Fed survey that are weak, then Chicago PMI pops out with a, with a 65. I mean, some conflicting signals. How do you process all that? Yeah, I, I definitely, there's always conflicting signals in the marketplace. And this is Bob talking. For me, I always look at the fundamentals of the corporate earnings, and I like where the P.E. number is today. Uh, and certainly I always pay more attention to the peg ratio, what's my P.E. relative to my growth uh, number. So that's how I guide myself. But you will always find data points that support your theory, and you have to choose the data points that are primary to how you want to view the world. Yeah.